Hey everyone, it's Yasmin and I'm back on here to talk about the kind of daunting process of getting a thesis position. This is something I had the opportunity to go through over the past year and to be honest, I feel like it was a really big learning curve that I didn't quite see coming. During this process, I also remember having a bit of difficulty trying to figure out like what steps to take, when to take them, how to even take them. So I figured by outlining my experience, it might be helpful to those of you that are trying to pursue a thesis as well. Now, before we get into the nitty gritty, I just wanted to give a general rundown of the timeline that I used in order to get a thesis placement, as well as the times in which I did them. So in terms of timing, there's no set way to go about it, but I do believe that the earlier you start, the better chances you have of getting a placement that you'd really like. Depending on your program, you might also get additional help, such as like what steps to take and when to take them, from a certain group under your department. For example, the department that I'm under created a type of course, I guess, on Avenue where they just posted very helpful resources that helped us with our thesis search. For me though, taking a thesis is mandatory, so it could change if you're taking a thesis without that requirement. Either way though, just keep an eye out at the beginning of the year and maybe check in with your department to see if there are any resources they have to offer. I do want to emphasize that I'm only familiar with science-based theses, but I do think that the general timeline and everything can also be transferable to other types of theses as well. Now the first and probably the most crucial step of the thesis grind is to do your research. This is how you'll figure out what your thesis requires, what options are available to you, and what labs or supervisors might be the most interesting to you or the most relevant to your future plans. During this time, I looked at previous thesis course outlines to see what was expected of me, and I also took a look at what labs would be available for me during the year. Usually you're given a list of supervisors under your department that you can pursue, but if you did have someone in mind from a different department, you can still pursue them as long as you get the okay from your department's coordinators. Keep in mind that you'll be doing your thesis in the lab that you get accepted in, so make sure you're actually, you know, genuinely passionate about the work that they're doing. After identifying the labs that I was most interested in, it was time to start the emailing process. This is how you'll start reaching out to supervisors to state your interest in their work and how you would like the opportunity to pursue a thesis under their supervision. I did this part around October and early November, and I'll be honest, it's probably the most stressful part of the thesis process because there's just so much to do and a lot to keep up with. Supervisors are busy people, so oftentimes when you send out an email, it can get lost in their inbox, but then you don't want to follow up because you don't want to be annoying, but then you also really want that placement, so it's just the whole process. The most important thing to remember is that it's not personal and you just gotta do what you gotta do. With my emails, I would try to send them at a time when I thought they might be checking their inboxes, so I would usually aim for a bit past 9 a.m. I would also include all of the documents that are required um, in that first email just to save time, and that included my CV, my unofficial transcript, and the thesis course outline. I'll go over what to actually include in that email in a follow-up video, but after sending it, I would usually wait about a week before sending a follow-up email. So once you go through the emailing process, you'll start getting some responses. This can include interview invitations or rejections. Now, rejections can hurt, but it's important to remember that sometimes labs just have reached capacity and it's not necessarily a reflection of you. Again, it's just part of the process and it's another hurdle that you'll have to overcome. With rejections, you can always follow up with a thank you for your time email and just close that chapter. But with interview invitations, you are one step closer. Follow up by saying that you'd love an interview and confirm what time works for the both of you. As a little tip, I suggest having a type of Excel sheet to help you keep track of who has accepted you, who hasn't, and other important things. Now it's time for the big step, the interview. This is where you're really going to show who you are, your interest in the lab, and why you're a good candidate for a thesis placement. These interviews can be done either by the supervisor, their graduate students, or other personnel from the lab. They can also be done online or in person. If you're given the choice, I would say to go for the in-person option because I feel like you can express yourself better face-to-face. -face. It also means no awkward Zoom moments, so that's always a plus. 
my tips for this step are just to be confident, be prepared, and just be yourself. A lot of the time, supervisors just want to get a good sense of your character just to see if you'd fit in well with the rest of the lab. As for preparation, just make sure you're really familiar with the supervisor's work, uh, maybe even come with a few questions about certain projects, and just identify the points that you plan to discuss for this interview. You got this, just make sure you keep up with your other emails as well. Then, if all goes great, you're accepted for a thesis. You can finally relax and maybe even start working in the lab. For me personally, I had the opportunity to work as a research assistant over the summer with my lab, and I just feel like I've learned so much more about the projects that are going on in that lab and just gained a lot of hands-on experience um, and a lot of useful lab techniques that I can use for the year. To be honest, this position really let me figure out what exactly it was that I wanted to pursue for my thesis, and otherwise I think I might have struggled a little bit as soon as the year started. Um, so yeah, I really recommend kind of taking this opportunity if it is given to you. So there you go, that's the general timeline of what to expect for your thesis process. I know it sounds daunting, but just take it one step at a time and you'll be fine. The SSE also offers a ton of various resources that can help you build up those skills that uh, might be required during this thesis process, so I definitely recommend to check them out. If you're interested in the tips and tricks for certain parts of this process, make sure to check out my follow-up video where I do a bit of a deep dive into emails, spreadsheets, and interview tips to help better prepare you for your thesis. Other than that, good luck everyone, you got this.